everyone, Karen the Warp Spinster here. I'm joined today by my stash of two and a half inch squares and we'd all like to thank you for visiting us on our channel. My goal today is to get together a design to use up some of these two and a half inch squares that I have. I've got a few. I suspect some of you have one or two in your stash as well. This isn't going to be necessarily about showing you how to make a specific block or quilt. It's just talking through my process for how I might go about designing something with just the squares. If you have a program like EQ or Procreate or Illustrator or any of those graphic kinds of things, then you can probably pretty easily do it there as well. But I know many of you probably don't have any of those programs. So I want to just play with some two and a half inch squares. Sometimes play is just a good thing to do. I'm probably going to mostly be taking from this box, this bin, which has mostly some pretty brightly colored squares. Looks like at least the top ones here are from Michael Dabrowski and whatever, anyway. So I am going to be talking through, walking through my design process here. If you aren't interested in hearing how I go about all that, then you can just fast forward or change the speed to 1.5 or whatever. So let's get started. My goal here is to use up a lot of these squares. And of course, the easiest, most straightforward, I should say, thing to do would be to just sew them all together. And that's perfectly good, acceptable thing. It's kind of a larger size postage stamp quilt. But I wanna do a modern kind of twist on it. And that means for me, I want some negative space in here. But I still want to use a lot of these squares. So that's going to be a balance, balancing act for me. This is, I, I'm just fiddling around here. This white represents the negative space, so it would be whatever background fabric I'm using. It may or may not be white. Might be black, might be gray, just not sure. And all I'm starting out with here is separating them by kind of a sashing strip. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, that I might want to start out with a narrow. The advantage of doing this digitally, of course, is that you don't have to move every <laughs> single one and then make it a little wider with each row. So I'm just doing simple rows here, starting with the basics. Sometimes those are the best. Maybe I actually want to start out on this side where they are butted right up against each other and then they gradually start to move apart. Kind of like that idea. I'm not paying attention too much to the colors here, just not putting the same thing right next to each other, which will upset the visual. Let's see where I'm at on the screen here so I don't lose you. And honestly, rather than looking at it from the sort of sideways angled perspective I have. If my voice changes, sometimes it's because I'm looking at what the camera's seeing, which is actually going to be a better vantage point for me because it shows it head on, which is not the way I'm looking at it right now. This would be very good if you could do it on a design wall or something vertical is even better. So I could start to space them out that way. I could also, hmm, <laughs> as I move along, start to space them out in the horizontal direction. So I have some horizontal spacing in there. I don't know, is that considered the vertical direction or the horizontal direction? I don't know. And I'm not going to be very precise about it now. I just want to get a general idea of how that might look. These are still aligned vertically, but not horizontally. 
And then this is going to start to have even more space in between, both vertically and horizontally. It's more of a dispersion thing. I'm thinking I might like this. Should I be moving? No, nope. I was going to say, should I move this one down too? But I don't think so. I may want a block like effect. So I want a straight line up there. You probably can't see me up there, but there's a straight line up here. No matter how I do this, you're going to lose part of it when I start spreading these out, but I think you'll, you'll get the idea. And then they start to be spread out more here, and I can do that as slowly or quickly in terms of spacing as I want to. So this doesn't have to be quite as much, but this one, and I could drop it down equal amounts or vary it if I want to have an even funkier kind of look. These are going to start moving down quite a lot. Some of those are going off screen, I know, for you. I like that effect. Now down here, you can't see it, but I've got an angle going on here. There's a limit to how far I can push this up. But now I've got an angle down here, which I could add, just keep doing this, the same pattern down the length of the quilt, but at the bottom, if I even, if I wanted to do this for the whole length, which is kind of, hmm, I might, then I still have to deal with this angle and I have choices for how I can do that. I can cut pieces to make this come out right. So or just chop it off, I guess, is actually what I'm saying down here. Not sure I want to do that. What I think I might do is wherever the, the end point is down here, I can either fill in with white here, or I could pull this up a little bit, take this and whatever the end point is, just do a piece about that size to sort of finish it off. And then the next one, I don't want to actually cut these, would be right next to it. So it gives it and then for the next one, I would have to move it down, of course. So they would all be at the edge of the quilt, but give it that finished rounded look at the bottom. I'm kind of liking this idea. What do you guys think? What would you do differently? How might you change? I'm really liking this. <laughs> oh, golly. I love it when a plan comes together. And of course, when I have seams, these are gonna be a little smaller, but relatively speaking, they will. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Don't know yet how I feel about these being butted right against each other. I think I, I might leave them vertically butted up against each other, but just a little sliver in between, like a sashing, vertical sashing kind of thing. For some reason, I don't like them butted right up against each other. You might. Oh, I like that a lot. Aren't you happy you don't have to sit here and watch me sew this? <laughs> All right, so that's one idea. When I find an idea I like, I will take a photo of it <clears throat> so I can save that idea. And I might print it out, <clears throat> excuse me, and just make some notes about it so that I have a record. And then I can move on to a different design. And now that I've cleaned off all the pre-cut schmutz, 
Let's try something else. I could do a similar thing in a square. I could start out with Hmm. Then I'm going to have to, in order to be able to keep it a square, I would have to do the same amount between them as I do going that way. So has to have sashing this way, but also around the center is what I'm saying. You get my drift. You're all quilters, you know how that works. When you add something in somewhere, you gotta add it in somewhere else in order to keep the square. All right, so just a little bit in between them. And then I'm going to start adding a wider space. And I might do it more gradually than I'm doing here. I have to be quite a bit more in order for that to, well now, here's what I'm gonna do. This one will be four instead of three. Maybe it will be five instead of three, depending on how far apart I want to. Now it's probably gonna be five, isn't it? So let me do it on the side here first. And that will give me some idea. And I know I'm gonna to have to space these out too, but that's about where I want to go. So they're going to be like this. And then up here, Just telling me how to space these. Oops, these have to go out further, don't they? And these, and they have to be farther apart. To make this work right. So I could work that out mathematically, or I could just make a funky shaped block. It doesn't have to be square. Kind of liking this too. I wonder if I could combine the two. I plop this down in the middle of that graduated vertical piece. Hmm. Always have to be thinking about things in your head, don't you? Ideas running around like crazy. Kind of like that idea too. And then as I move out, which you can't see, my camera's only gonna go so high, but as I move out over here, then it would just get wider. So I'm basically framing each previous section. I like that too. And that would use quite a few strips, strips, squares, whatever I'm working with right now. I could also do it in, sort of improvisationally where I just piece these however I want them spaced. Piece these and if I need to chop them off then I chop them off but I think I kind of want to leave them whole because if I chop them off, then I'm just creating more scraps. <laughs> and more scraps I don't need right now. I want to use them up. Okay, I like that idea, so I could take a picture of that just to jog my memory. And I'll clear the deck, and we'll try one more. Now I'm going to try something that I have no idea whether or not this is going to work, but just kind of playing around as usual. Gathering threads along the way. What if I were to do something like that in the center? 
and still have some space in between. So I'm using a fair number of, pardon me, I can't seem to talk and move squares at the same time. I hope it isn't going to be one of those days for the rest of the day. And that's interesting. If I, let me see if I can move this over a little bit. Move these over. Now, if I do another on point piece here and just keep moving across. Then I set up a grid, which is okay, but I'm wondering what if I drop it? And now I have these like that. And this then is going to be plain in the center and these out here. So they're kind of nine patches with move that over a little so you can maybe see it. And I sort of like that. Not as well as the others, but I sort of like it. If we butt these up against each other. So these will naturally have some space there because, of course, this diagonal measurement, the hypotenuse, is larger than the side of the square. That kind of looks like the rolling stone block, doesn't it? Except that the rolling stone block is connected. Well, there's something we could do with huh, another idea. Let's take traditional blocks and start adding spaces in. I kind of like that. Not sure, but what I don't like the other way better. What do you think? One or two in there. What do you think? Or your mind has possibly gone off in a completely different direction by this point and you've already got your own design figured out and down on paper. I think I'm still liking this better. It's just a question of how I'm going to I like this one better. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. How I would do block to block. What I could do is just put more space in between. I still want quite a bit of space here. And this is just, of course, preference for how much negative space you want in there and frankly, how much piecing you want to do. <laughs> All that negative space in there. So more space here. Have this in the center. But still spaced around here. As I said, I just like a lot of negative space in my quilts. Those could be aligned, these two blocks, or I could just shift them up and down and not necessarily alternating them or even going, say, halfway or a third of the way down. I might just sort of randomly put them together. You know how I like to do that. And before it was over, I might end up slicing them and adding in some other strips. You know me. Slice and dice kind of gal, I guess. All right, so I would, will take a picture of this. I'll actually just do a still from the video. But I encourage you to take photos of things that you come up with that you like. And of course, this is just using two and a half inch squares as two and a half inch squares. You could do all kinds of things with them. You know what I can do with half square triangles. So I know you know what you could do with half square triangles, which may be completely different from what I do. That's the fun thing about 
designing quilts and especially modern improvisational type quilts. You do your own thing and come up with your own art. All right, that's number three. I think that's going to be it for this. It's gonna be a short video, but you get the idea. If, you, if there are particular design elements that you really like, like I like white space in between, I also like that graduated look but with very narrow sashing with the first one, a little wider the next one, etc., cetera, et cetera. That's a particular look I like. If you, you would just take whatever design concepts you like. Maybe you don't like a lot of negative space. And that's a, a more modern kind of thing. If you're a more traditional quilter, then you can try more traditional aspects or design features. Maybe you do want to start out with a nine patch sort of look and just start twisting and rotating and moving those around. Nine patches are my favorite. Someday I'll show you my one and a half inch nine patches that are just all kinds of scraps and colors and types and <laughs> moods all sewn together. I had a variation of that that's been running around in my head. That's enough rambling from me. I hope that this has given you some maybe motivation to go into your two and a half inch squares and start playing with them. I may put a few pieces together and see what happens. Um, if I do that, I'll come back and do an update on what I decided to do. So from me and my two and a half inch stash, thanks for joining me today for just this short walkthrough, talk through video. I've had another thought, so I'm back. What if I wanted to use a contrasting color and I had cut some strips and squares and whatnot of this black paper in case I wanted to play with an accent color, which I didn't end up doing, but I could certainly still do that. What if I framed that in black, for example? Ooh, you know what? I kind of like it. Hmm. A little bit offset there. All kinds of things you can do. But I could, for example, frame this in black and then put it in there. I could make this a square and a square. So I'd essentially have triangles out here. Let me try and sort of fake it. Yeah. You don't know what I mean by square and a square. Probably do, but just in case. It'd have been handier if I'd had a larger black square cut, wouldn't it? So I could do that sort of effect, which would. Ooh, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Ooh. I like that idea. I'm going to have to take another photo. You could even do, say, different shades of gray through here. Black and grays. Or a different accent color that you might want to use. and Or lots of different accent colors. I could use, say, a teal blue around it. Probably a solid for me would be my preference. And then I could move these teal blues away and use different colors if I'm losing blue, using blue there. Or I could make sure that I have teal blues all around there. Say if this were blue, that might be too much though. I do kind of like having the blues around with the black in the center. All right, enough for me. <laughs> Go ahead and play, but try out some accent colors too. Something that will contrast well with your, whatever your background or field is. All right, now I'm finished. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video at whatever speed, please hit the thumbs up button. 
and I hope to see you back here next time. In the meantime, be well, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. Mm -hmm.